Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back for chapter 20 of the book of Revelation. Um, today we are picking up not just in the 20th chapter, but actually the start of the very last section of the book. Can you believe yeah, it? Yeah, the seventh <laughs> section. We're actually here. So um, again, looking at that literary structure, just like we've been doing throughout the whole study, there's seven different sections in this book. And today we are starting the final one, number seven. And uh, today is another interesting topic. This is one, again, I've read through this chapter before in the past, never really made a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. Talking about Satan being bound for a thousand years, then you have the saints reigning with Christ for a thousand years. I've always taken that, of course, very literally. Why Satan would be bound a thousand years and then let go. There's lots of questions I've always <laughs> yeah. had about this chapter specifically. So um, good thing that Bev is here because she's gonna walk <laughs> us through all of this as always. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Bev. But before I do, again, knowing just like we've talked about every single episode that each chapter kind of builds on another, mm -hmm. What do we need to know that we've previously studied that's going to help us in this? And then, of course, I know I'm anxious to hear all about kind of the thousand year reign, this thousand years that Satan is bound and then let go. Like what what all is going on in this chapter? So without any further ado, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have some thoughts. <laughs> all right. All right. That's good. Uh, Yesterday, it ended section six. Remember, the kingdom of the world is all the kingdoms of the nations that all come together in rejecting Christ. Right. Now, I have to mention that all through the ages, individuals can always choose Jesus, always, from yeah. the very beginning of time. Right. But there comes a point at the end of the world that the nations themselves reject Jesus Christ. Mm. And okay. that's what we talked about in section six. Remember, the beast out of the sea and the false prophet all were thrown into the lake of fire yeah and everything was destroyed death itself was destroyed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's where we ended yesterday yes today we're going to take one more little peek at that again okay, okay. uh as jesus begins his reign mm -hmm. and what's happening with satan during that time mm -hmm. And we're going to see that it kind of ends at the same spot that we did yesterday. Okay, okay. Now okay. let me ask you one more thing, just kind of before we get into this section. So again, knowing that numbers, kind of as we went over in the very first mm -hmm. overview of this book, mm -hmm. they have meanings. Mm -hmm. So this seventh section that we're now entering, entering in, even though it's kind of right at the end of the book, I can't help but think that it it's kind of a completion section. Would I be correct in Absolutely. saying that? Absolutely. Okay. When we finish this section, yeah, everything's accomplished that God mm -hmm. had intended in the in Jesus Christ and salvation. Okay, and I don't know if I mentioned it too, and you could probably guess if you haven't, but section seven is chapters 20 through 22, uh -huh. all the way to the yeah. end of the book. Clear to so. the end. Okay. So now we're gonna start with this thousand years. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean? Yes, I'm very, I'm very <laughs> curious. We have to remember, does a thousand years equal a thousand years? Mm -hmm. Now that would be taking it very literal. Now there is a passage in the Bible and I think a lot of people have mm -hmm. kind of referenced this before, and I, 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 have, I forget exactly where it is, you could probably tell me, mm -hmm. but it's a day with the Lord is like a thousand years, or a thousand years is like such as a day with the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's, I'm assuming symbolic, but I, I haven't known, maybe it could be literal. So I think sometimes people think, oh, okay, a day in heaven equals a thousand years down here, yeah. vice versa, so. Yeah, I think we have to look at symbols and what they represent. Okay. And even in explaining that, mm -hmm. I would have to look back and we could look back and look at symbols. Yeah. yeah and yeah. that's a good thought. But I think we should probably just stick to the thousand at the moment. But that's, yeah. I appreciate you mentioning that because okay. a lot of people have used that to try to interpret scripture and right. figure out this things. Is, this is what it is. Yes. And as we've seen all the way through these 20 chapters, it's very, <laughs> very symbolic. So. It's God's numbers, not ours. But I'm That's glad true. you brought that up, Ben, okay. because a lot of people have looked at scripture and these numbers that way, kind of like this means this. Yes. Instead of going back to creation as we did initially and right. saying, what does the number mean yeah. from God's perspective? Right. So when you break down a thousand, you get 10 times 10 times 10. Mm -hmm. That fullness of testing kind of a yes. number. Yes, okay. it's fullness of testing because 10 is the number of testing here on the earth to the power of three, which is the number of life. Mm -hmm. So it's a fullness of testing and now life comes. Hmm. Wow. So that's what the, it's a time period. Yeah. If there's fullness, t the test is over and life comes at the end of it. Interesting. I love that. Um, I, I will say too, it, it has really helped in my understanding of this book. I, I would say probably more than anything else, tying it back to other parts of the Bible, especially in the Old Testament. It's amazing when yes. you look back there, mm -hmm. how much of it lines up and how much you see almost history repeating itself. 
Exactly. Like this is not the first time that we're seeing this yes. and we see the outcome in the Old Testament. So mm -hmm. it, it really, it, there's so many parallels and kind of mirrorings in a way. And I'm sure glad you brought that up because you know, Genesis the beginning and Revelation the end. Yeah. So things kind of started, the problem started there in Genesis. Right, right. The solution we see about totally completed in Revelation. Yeah. So now that you mention it, I kind of like to just go back to the Old Testament just a moment. Of course. <laughs> you expect Why that, am I not surprised? <laughs> All right. I could have guessed that we were going back to the Old Testament. So, <laughs> All right. We're, I'm assuming Genesis too, right? Yeah, we're okay. going to Genesis. All right, of yes, course. Yes, we are. Back to Adam, the first man God created. Okay. He created the earth for to have men and women on, down here, to be mm -hmm. his family. Mm -hmm. And he was made with that spirit of life in him. Right, when God breathed life into him. Yes. Yes. And God then put him as with authority over the whole world. Mm -hmm. In fact, he had dominion over all the animals. He named them all. Mm -hmm. And he was what you might call the prince over this world. Yes. And so everything was life and good and wonderful. Mm -hmm. But God warned Adam, don't eat of one tree. Remember the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And of yeah. course, he disobeyed God. And God had said, the day you will eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and that day you'll die right and sure enough the day he listened to the serpent and ate of that tree yeah his he, spirit died his spirit died and he gave his authority over to satan right yeah and because when he obeys him he becomes a servant right and we know that too because even yeah. the bible talks about later on it refers to satan as the god of this world or yes. the prince of this world yes, many times does. in scripture so it's not it's not something that we're speculating here the bible spells it out yes. very clearly so he's now dead. Mm -hmm. That was kind of his, the first man who really died, yeah. you might say, was yeah. Adam. Yeah. So that was that first death. In Adam, all mankind died that mm -hmm. day. Yeah. So all mankind needs a savior. Yeah. So now let's fast forward to the New Testament and we see Jesus at the cross. Mm -hmm. He paid the penalty on the cross for all mankind. Mm -hmm. They deserved, they were guilty due to die and he died in their place. We know that. And then he was resurrected mm -hmm. out of that death and went to heaven. Mm -hmm. And in that, the whole world was judged as guilty. Mm -hmm. Right, on Jesus. On Jesus, because yeah. he had to die the death for everybody. So they're all guilty. He took the death mm -hmm. of anyone, of the whole wide world, on him. Mm -hmm. We see that he ascended on high, sat down at the right hand of God himself, and is now reigning up there. That's when Jesus Christ begins his reign. Okay. So Jesus really began his reign at his resurrection. Exactly. Okay. Now, Absolutely. I know some people might think in their minds, again, because the first time that I, I had this thought, I was like, well, there's still all these horrible things happening here on the earth, but that's really just, it, it's not, I mean, while there's certainly demonic influence and things like that, you still have people with that sin nature, but God now, instead of just leaving us down here in sin, has given us a choice. Because exactly. again, just kind of like, like exactly. that little scroll that we read about earlier in Revelation, everybody has that choice Absolutely. on whether they choose Jesus or not. Mm -hmm. And to some degree, the reason why we're still waiting and why we're in this period is because Jesus is willing, that God is willing again, that none should perish. Right. So he's waiting, as many he's waiting for as many people as possible to come into his kingdom. Exactly. Okay. okay. Exactly. So let's just go ahead and move on to Revelation. Okay. Chapter 20. Mm -hmm. And if you could... Look at that beginning of Jesus' reign, what happens to Satan now at this time. Okay. Uh, it's Revelation 20, 1 to 3. Okay. All right. So verses <laughs> 1 through 3. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him, so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. So here we see that Jesus had all authority from dying on the cross. Mm -hmm. All authority has been given to him. He has a key because mm -hmm. anything he opens and shuts, he has the authority to open and shut things. Yes. And so he has a key and he throws devil, the devil down in the bottomless pit, locks it. Mm -hmm. and said, you're not going to deceive the nations anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he, that's where he's put him. Hmm. I know a struggle for me, and honestly, it's, it's still been a struggle, I think even partly throughout the study, mm -hmm. is we have this tendency to visualize things in our minds. So when I read about Jesus locking Satan into this pit, 
Mm -hmm. I'm literally picturing, you know, him putting like a chain around his neck, opening a door. There's like smoke and fire coming out and he throws him down and is like, not until a thousand years (laughs) is up. So I have to keep in, and it sounds silly, but I have to keep in mind, this is, this is not literal. If it were literal, Satan would literally be like, you know, basically in a pit somewhere, not wielding influence on here. And then it brings other questions like, well, are all the demons that are his fallen angels, are they with him in the pit too? Or why are bad things still happening in the Mm -hmm. world if Satan is locked in a pit? Mm -hmm. So you can't think about this literally. Exactly. What, okay. And you and I talked about this a little bit and it helped me out a lot, but what it means is this, and you correct me if I'm, if I'm going down a wrong path here, my understanding is that thousand years, the pit, all of this is symbolic that when Jesus came to earth, we know that he crushed Satan by dying on the cross, but not just dying on the cross, rising from the dead. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he took that authority back that Adam gave to Satan in a sense. So when it was referring to Satan as the God of this world and the prince of this world, Mm -hmm. Jesus really took that authority back. Exactly. Now, you might then think, well, okay, well, there's still bad things happening on Mm -hmm. there. There's rape and murder and people stealing, doing all kinds of horrible things. Well, Satan is still at work in the world. We clearly see that, Mm -hmm. but his power is now limited in a way. So in the sense that when Jesus came, all of a sudden it opened up a new door and a new way that people did not have access to before. Exactly. The so, salvation it had not happened. Right. The whole world was in darkness and yes. until Jesus, the light, yes. came down to light the light and actually die. Yes. So prior to Jesus dying and then resurrecting, mm-hmm. the whole world really was in darkness. I mean, you had people here and there who would follow God, but in general, outside of the nation of Israel, I mean, we read about every other nation in the Bible, and they are all living in darkness. Exactly. And so you see Satan's control really is is virtually complete before Jesus dies on that cross exactly. and rises again. But now that he has, now Christians are not just limited to a nation. It's not God's people Israel. It's God's people who have chosen my son. Exactly. And they are not limited to a nation or a race or a bloodline or anybody. They are everywhere. They're in the United States, China, they're in South Africa, wherever you're watching from, Mm -hmm. anybody can be a child of God. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So that, when you think about it, I mean, that is beautiful, really. Mm -hmm. And and, and the symbolism takes on so much more meaning when you read it in that way, Mm -hmm. because you realize Satan's authority really is diminished. And as we go out and we tell people about this wonderful news, the gospel, the good news, Mm -hmm. that you can have a relationship with Jesus. You don't have to live in that darkness anymore. It opens up stuff mm-hmm. that was not possible before. Exactly. Okay. All right. Because now they can actually self be saved. Yes. Okay. And become sons and daughters of wow. God because of Jesus Christ. Wow. And He's reigning there now. Yes. In heaven. Wow. So it's a no beautiful longer, picture. Yeah. No longer deception. Hmm. No one can be deceived anymore. Yeah. Because Jesus is now reigning and yes. he has conquered the devil. Yes. And that last part about that he has to be down there for a while, but he will try and rise up again. Mm-hmm. That's still what is going to come when God <laughs> virtually smashes him into the concrete. I mean, yeah. there is coming yeah, yeah. a point where yeah. he's going to be yes. so mad yes. and try and rise up. Again, kind of that little shot glass that we the illustrated the other day. You know, <laughs> And he uses but, the nations at the end to try yes. to make that all happen. So right. it's all... Yeah. yeah, so that's mm-hmm. still to come, but that's really going to be his final ending. Final, he comes up for for his destruction. Yeah. he's resurrected to die. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Forever yeah. and ever and ever. Wow. Wow. So, okay. So All right. So we're only <laughs> we're only in the first three verses, but this is really okay. good. Okay. My next question, Ben, is this. Okay. And you don't have to answer it, but I'm going to just kind of give some clues on this. All right. But it is, when does the church collectively begin to reign then? We know Jesus begins to reign at the cross. Mm-hmm. When does the church, you know, when I talk about the church, I talk about all people who've made that individual choice to believe in Jesus. Yes. That's what we comprise the church, the family of God. So yes. we use that term church like we did at the beginning of Revelation. That's mm-hmm, what it means. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when do they begin to reign? Revelation 20 begins, as far as the church is concerned, mm-hmm. where the seventh church overcomer, the end of that passage, gets okay. left off. Okay. Let me remind you what that last uh, overcomer promise was in, to the seventh church. Mm-hmm. It says, to him that overcomes who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, you know. Yeah. I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, 
just as I sat down with my father on his throne. Hmm. There's a sense of this ruling and reigning being seated with Jesus in mm-hmm. heaven. We see it quite a bit in the New Testament where it says, Jesus, you died with him and you rose with him and you're seated with him yeah. in heavenly places. Yeah. So there's a sense that the church is right now reigning with Christ in heaven, even yeah. though we're still down here on earth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what it's going to be talking about here in this next little section of Revelation. Hmm. Okay. Now, just think about that. I was dead, but see, I came to life and I reigned with Christ. Yeah. With Jesus. So let's see if this ties together. I think it does. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and read, if that's okay, verses 4 and 5 sure. in Revelation 20 here. Okay. As it kind of talks about the saints reigning here. Okay. It says, I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Hmm, okay. So I remember this verse very specifically because I remember <laughs> as a kid, some. <laughs> this is going to sound horrible, it was like some preacher talking about Revelation one time. And I remember specifically, he was like, there may come a day where you have to be willing to get your head lopped off for Jesus. Uh-huh. And I remember as a kid just being like, gulp. <laughs> you know, That's but scary. Can I, can I be, like, this is the problem, though, on why so many people are afraid of this book. Uh-huh. There's, you read about something like that, and it's just, oh, man, the future is really, really scary. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we all get raptured up and we don't have to go through anything bad. And it's... It's never been about that stuff. No, that's right. It's really not. It's not meant to be scary. It's not meant to be like, oh, the world is going to end and hopefully you can escape. Mm-hmm. For it's, it's a beautiful, symbolic meaning of Jesus coming back for his church. Yes. That's really what it's all about. Yes, hmm. and his church reigning right now. Yes. Because yes. it's interesting because when I've accepted Jesus, I'm seated with him, like we just said. Mm-hmm. I'm ruling and reigning with him. Yeah. Up there, yeah. even though I'm still down here right now. Right. We've well, and it makes Jesus. sense. It talks about us being one with Christ. I mean, he dwells in us. Yeah. And if you think about it, like, I mean, if we're his bride and we're supposed to be one with Jesus, it makes sense that we would rule and reign with him in heaven. It's, yes. Yeah. And we have fits. his authority. So he's given me his authority. We're the people down on earth that are reigning with him. Right. So he's there, but he's given us the authority, his authority right. here. Right. So... He's given me authority, and I judge things from the king's point of view. I'm sitting on a throne judging. Mm -hmm. I'm seated there ruling and reigning with Christ, Mm -hmm. but I still have his authority to judge things from his perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, I've rejected the kingdom that I was born into, its values, its culture, and its sin, everything about it. Mm -hmm. And so I don't receive that mark of that kingdom. Yeah. I've moved out of that family. Mm-hmm. He's birthed me with the power of his spirit. I was dead, but now I'm alive. I've yeah. been made alive. I've been resurrected with Jesus. That's yeah. that first resurrection. Now I've heard people say that before too, like, well, I, I rule and reign with Christ or we rule in heavenly kingdoms. And, and the Bible does talk about that. It definitely backs up that idea. But I think for people that can be confusing, like, well, I'm, I'm here on the earth. You know, I, I live where I live. Like how, how am I ruling and reigning with Christ, like we know Jesus is in heaven, but I'm not, so mm-hmm. how, how does that mm-hmm. work? But it, it really is symbolizing that we are one with him. I mean, his Holy Spirit, the same spirit that was literally inside of Jesus mm-hmm. Christ when he was on the earth, is inside of you when you have that relationship with him. Exactly. It kind of like, I, I mean, Jesus even mm-hmm. hinted at this in a lot of symbolism that he talked about, like, I am the vine, you are the branches, I am the head, you are the body, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. that one can't function separately from another. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, certainly like, Jesus is the son of God. We, I, I am a son of God. I'm not the son of God. Mm-hmm. But in that sense, like he relies on us to spread the message that he's presented to us. You know, it's, we, we function with him, I guess, might be the easiest way to say it. Yes, that's a great way to describe it. Okay. And in that clash with the kingdom, mm-hmm. the, the symbol of being beheaded means they're not going to listen to your testimony. Right, it's, right. It means, forget you, we're just going to, we're right. going to do our own thing and not listen to what you're saying. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. mean a literal beheading. Right. Like it's mentioned. more like we're cutting you off symbolically. Yeah. 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 We aren't going to listen to it. They're rejecting the message. Hmm. Exactly. Okay. So as when we are born again, we've crossed it. The Bible says we have actually crossed from death, 
have crossed from death to life. In mm-hmm. other words, we are eternally alive now. Right, right. So we're up to the sixth blessing in the book of Revelation. Okay. Right here in Revelation 20, verse 6, okay. is the sixth blessing. Would you read that for us, Ben? Yeah. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. We have that part, like we just mentioned, in the first resurrection. So the second death has no power over us. Well, what is the second death? Well, it tells us right down later in the book mm-hmm. exactly what the second death is. Okay. It's the lake of fire, okay. eternal death. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the first death had to be Adam when he took the death upon the whole human race. That's okay. the first death. Okay. The second Kind of like everybody died. There's His spirit died. And, and all of his kids. From that kids, point forward, you're right. Okay. That's the first death. Okay. And we all are born into that, but we can get out of it, be resurrected out of that in Jesus right. Christ. Which is really the first resurrection. Exactly. When Jesus came and offered a way out of that, that's the first resurrection. Through his okay. resurrection. Okay. And so then we don't have any power. The second death has absolutely no power over us. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that second death is really what we've been reading about, that finality of if you haven't chosen Jesus. Eternal death. Okay, okay. Exactly. Interesting. I like here too, notice again it says, they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. I just, I can't help but think of Revelation, the first chapter of Revelation, where it says that Jesus had loved us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us kings and priests to serve his God and Father. Mm-hmm. There it is again, the kings and priests, right in the beginning of the book when it's talking about yeah. the church. Yeah. Kings being, we're ruling from heaven. We have Jesus' authority here. It's kind of like the kingdom of heaven invades this earth through us. Right. With the Holy Spirit in our spirit, we invade this kingdom yeah. with his kingdom. Yeah. Is that a cool yes. thought? Interesting. And priests. You're not going to need priests someday when there's no sin. Right. right. Yeah, that makes sense. We hold out the Lamb of God and say, hey, we're all guilty. We all need Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's how we're priests. Mm-hmm. Right down here on earth. I just think it's exciting hmm. to think about we're holding out that forgiveness of Jesus to everybody. Else. Yeah. That's a witness. Yeah, yeah. So we see the beginning of this thousand years, this time period, is the reign of Christ with his saints. Yeah, starting at his resurrection. Really. Yes, starting okay. his resurrection. And now we're going to go to the end of the thousand years. Okay. And we're going to look to see that death has conquered, Satan mm-hmm. and death has conquered. Okay. And life comes. Okay. Again, not a literal thousand years, symbolic time period. This time period. Okay. And we're in it right now. Right. So let's read Revelation 20, verses 7 to 10. Okay. All right. So 7 through 10. Now, when the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So this end of the thousand years kind of equates to what we saw with Babylon. Okay. Babylon falling. Mm -hmm. That all the nations kind of are in on this, rejecting Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so that's when the end actually comes. God sees that the nations themselves have just come to the point that every single one of them is against Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all nations are united against Jesus. They're united against God. And that's when God releases Satan Mm -hmm. to get out of the bottomless pit because they're all united to his thought. Yeah, And they give their authority, just like Adam did with Remember? He yes. gave his authority to Satan. Mm-hmm. Well, the kingdoms have now said, you have our authority. Yeah. We're going to be subjected to you. Whatever right. you say, we're doing. Right. So Satan is really kind of released under, at least in his mind, it's it's really false pretenses. Like he yes. thinks like, now is my moment. Yes. I'm being released. Gather them together. Yes. Let's get the and, battle of Armageddon And it's going. really the end for him. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Okay. And that's what's described here. When we talked about Babylon being destroyed, mm-hmm. we saw that the beast out of the sea, which is the kingdom of the world, And we saw the false prophet both being thrown into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Here's Satan thrown in there too. Yeah. So all three of those are thrown in to this final destruction of the lake of fire. Okay. Okay. Wow. Those three that had deceived the world Mm -hmm. that were opposed to Jesus Christ, 
end up in the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. And the last thing it moves into this chapter is that the dead are judged. Hmm. Now, this is not the righteous. This is the wicked. Okay. Because they're still in the dead camp, you yeah. might say. Yeah. And that's this last section hmm. of this chapter. It closes with this. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and read that for us, uh, verses 11 to 15. Okay. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone's name not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Sounds really, really serious. This is very, very serious. Okay. Remember Cain. I have to go one more time back to yeah. the Old Testament. Cain and Abel. Here. Yeah. Cain and Abel. He worked that cursed ground, and he brought the result of that effort, his works. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to come to God this way with my works. Yeah. And God's. You can't come to God that way. God said, no, that's not going to work. Right. He gave him specific instructions on how you come to him, yeah. but he didn't want to obey him. But the reason why it can't, it can't work, mm -hmm. he is not, he is evil. He, his works are worthless yeah. as far as he's guilty. How can he bring that to find peace with God? Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Yeah. And so notice here that many books are opened. Yeah, it, it, there's many more than books. just the book of life, I noticed. It said many books many were Many books. The dead, great and small, are judged by their works. This is all of their books. Hmm. It's their life, their hmm. works, many books. Hmm. Every book representing their works. Yeah. There's one other book, though, we noticed here. All those books, but there's one other book. It's the Lamb's Book of Life. Right. And that represents what Abel's offering was. Okay. He brought the firstborn lamb. Yeah. And that's what he offered for his guilt. He put his guilt upon that lamb, and that lamb died. Mm -hmm. So now that was acceptable to God. That's mm. the difference between Cain and Abel, and it's reflected right here. Wow, wow. So, one is trying to get by on their own good works, and one brings the sacrifice that God required. That's what that was all about in Genesis. Wow. So those in the Lamb's Book of Life who've put their sin on Jesus have taken part in Jesus' first resurrection. Right will not receive the second death, which yeah. is eternal death. Right. Taking part in that first resurrection, giving us the opportunity to come to God through Christ, obviously, by we're accepting His Son. We okay. have life. Yep. No second death for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing here is the kingdom of the world and the earth itself come to abrupt end. Right. They're destroyed. Yeah. And the last enemy of God, death itself, yeah. are thrown into the lake of fire, hmm. which is the Just second death. Forever destroyed. Forever destroyed. Hmm. So all the enemies of God are totally destroyed forever. Wow. That's the end of the chapter. It's really, it's really sobering, mm -hmm. that last part, reading yes. about the, the dead being judged. And again, mm -hmm. not, not about those who believe in Christ, because we know that it's not that we're even better people. Mm -hmm. It's just no. that we've brought the sacrifice that God required. We simply said, we, we believe in your son. It's, it's a free gift of salvation that was given to us, but it's... It's, man, you, you, you feel bad reading this, knowing a person going out into eternity thinking, I was a good person. I've done enough good things that I can earn God's Based favor. Based on their works. He says, I'll right. judge you by your works. If you bring that just like Cain did, I'll judge you by your works. But it's right. not acceptable. Yes. It's fascinating to yes. see that, that yes. the things that we do in life, and, and again, I, th I think it's interesting. They were judged according to their works, which is what they wanted to be judged by. Exactly. You know? You know, and, every religion is based on works. Yeah, yeah. The, the difference between knowing Jesus or not is that Jesus, you have to have relationship with him yeah. and be part of his family. There's no other religion in the whole wide world hmm. that's based that way. It's all yeah. based on the works. Yep. Yeah. you mm -hmm. can't that's right. earn your way into God's kingdom. It's mm -hmm. all on that relationship Absolutely. with Jesus and coming into his kingdom. Worthy is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. It's a big theme through the book of Revelation. Yeah. He alone is worthy right. of this, all praise. Right, right. The only one who is qualified to break off those seals, he's the only one that qualifies. Exactly. He really, really is. Exactly. Boy. 
Man, well, thank you so much, Beth, for taking us through another one. Wow, it's, it's hard to believe we have two left to go. Hey, well, listen, we hope you have a beautiful day wherever you're watching from. Thank you, as always, for joining us today. It really does mean the world that you're watching along with us and uh, learning more about God's Word and especially this book. As yes, confusing it as it can be <laughs> for yours truly if you haven't been able to do it. <laughs> so anyways, guys, all right, well, hey, well, listen, you all go out and have yourselves an amazing day. Mm -hmm. As a reminder, and I know I say this a lot, but boy, if you have not accepted Jesus, if you do not know Him as your Lord, Lord and Savior, please come to that decision. It's the easiest thing to do. It's simply saying yes to that relationship with Jesus. You, you don't have to wind up like this someday in judgment, trying to show what a good person you've been. It's not about that. It's never been about that. It's about one person. His name is Jesus Christ, knowing him. Make that decision today, all right? We love you guys. We'll see you back here tomorrow.